Hi there, my name is Sila Beckett, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. So, Paul Cornell. Paul Cornell is undeniably a fantastic writer. He is wonderful, and more importantly, he is a fantastic Doctor Who writer. If you're only familiar with his TV episodes, I think what he did three, uh, you've got to check out his novels. His novels are really, really wonderful. All of them, and they're all completely worth checking out. But, unfortunately, I cannot recommend to you to go out and buy them after the sheer idiocy that I saw him do last Friday. And I'm really, really glad I wasn't able to uh, to see it live as it happened, because uh, I, I'm a rabbi, I'm Jewish, as we're going to be talking about quite a lot here. And uh, I, I'm, I'm offline on Friday nights as part part of the, the, the Jewish Sabbath. So on Friday, we had another one of these fat fantastic watch-alongs and tweet-alongs that was arranged by the wonderful Emily Cook. Emily, you are a national treasure. You're an international treasure. But instead of being a, another wonderfully uniting moment in fandom, which I really have found these things to be, Cornell chose to make this into an expression of divisiveness and hatred. And I think it's pretty clear uh, that, you know, how, why he was doing it. And he was doing it all for personal gain. Uh, and indeed, this is a dangerous gambit for him because... The world of two months ago, when this kind of behavior was okay, is over. It's over completely. And it's more likely he'll end up uh, saying uh, five years from now, uh, can I get you fries of that, sir? Than anything else from this uh, <laughs> from this idiocy where he's like, he's definitely trying to whore himself out to, uh, to get a position that he wants. So most perplexingly for me, is that Cornell is somebody, I believe uh, his, his Christian faith is something that's very, very important to him. And it's just utterly bizarre. It falls to me, a Jew, a rabbi, to point out how unbelievably unchristian his behavior is, which is an allegation that I'm going to really unpack and, and I think uh, prosecute in quite some detail. But before I do that, can I ask you guys, can you hit the subscribe button? If you hit the subscribe button, that would make a rabbi very, very happy. It might, it might make a rabbi get his wings. Probably not. Can you hit the subscribe button? Can you hit the share button? Can you hit the like button? I am genuinely, and I would say somewhat pathetically grateful for every one of you who hits that subscribe button. So uh, I want to show, show you my appreciation. Firstly, go to the video notes and you will see you can download the Doctor Who audio story starring Nicholas Briggs as the Doctor from the mid to late 80s. Sorry, called Geopath. It uh, was a fan production, but really good. And the fan group that made it, audio videos, went on to become Big Finish. Also, I give stuff away each week on the channel. Uh, I like stuff. You like stuff. We all like stuff. So the stuffing away this week is The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Rings, the first of The Lord of the Rings movie. Fantastic movie. This is the extended edition. Oh, God, look at this packaging. It's so freaking nice. Uh, wonderful packaging. Um, it's the uh, extended edition. You get two DVDs for the movie. Then you get another full two DVDs full of makings of the the the, uh, the little book that comes with it. It's just so good. All, all, all you got to do to win it is subscribe to the channel. Subscribe and be the important part. And then leave the hashtag tree bid. Hashtag tree bid. I'm doing the giveaway tonight when I'm on the TARDIS zone. Uh, so be quick. Get your interest in quick. Go and check the video notes. It will give you all the instructions that you need if you didn't catch any through my uh, mumbled <laughs> pronunciation. Okay. So, so what the hell am I talking about with Cornell? Uh, Paul Cornell. Well, uh, the even the tweet on started with uh, Cornell tw uh, tweeting this. Let me just work out a way of opening this up. I have to go over here and click that. And then I click this. Look at me. I may be a boomer, but I can, I can work a computer a little bit. Doink! There you go. Uh, fine. So Cornell tweeted this. I really want tonight. Uh, I really want tonight's event to be about all of us. God, you know, I tell you, now I'm reading this in context is so bad. It's so freaking bad. The whole community. Oh God! I really want tonight to be. Uh, I really want tonight's event to be about all of us, the whole community. So I want to rope in fan creators, retweet as much as possible, encompass rather than broadcast. Not sure what encompass rather than broadcast means. Okay, so you know that's lovely. That's wonderful. That's great. The only trouble is. He is lying. He's lying through his teeth and doing the exact opposite of what he's saying. Because as he was rolling out this disingenuous bullcrap, he was simultaneously chain blocking massive swathes of fans, many of which have never had any interaction with him on Twitter whatsoever. And so why? Why did he chain block so many people? Who knows how many people? Do Dozens, hundreds, thousands, probably thousands is my guess. Uh, and you know why he did it? Because... They don't like the current era of Doctor Who. That is the heinous crime that they, they committed. You see, uh, for, for Cornell in his, uh, in his bigotry, and I'm going to call it bigotry because bigotry, that's what it is. I, I believe, and that's an assumption about his motivation, but I believe he assumes people 
Don't like the current era because they're some kind of ist. They're some kind of phobe. They're some kind of this immoral, terrible person who hates Whitaker purely because of, of her gender and everything else is fantastic about the show, but they just can't get over that she has to sit down to pee. Uh, which, of course, we all know, nope. That is utter, utter nonsense. But I have to ask you, Paul, do you not think that judging people favourably is a central Christian value. Do you not think that? And I don't understand how you can how you can uh, reconcile both both these things. Okay, yeah. Again, this is a Jew. This is a rabbi telling you you're a terrible Christian. That's a really really low benchmark that you, you made. I think the only way it can get any worse is if you have a, a, a Satanist tell you, "Geez, you know, you you're a little bit out of line there, guy." You know, and and yeah, you know, I think you're being a terrible Christian, uh, Christian, because of the terrible company you're keeping. Yeah, you know, we all, uh, you know, I think it's all is important to look at the company you keep because you do take on their characteristics. So, do you really think the the blue check mark Twitter Taliban that you simper up to, the Gil Simones or the Mark Wades of the world, represent any form of decent moral values? Do you really think they represent the loving kindness, which I believe is the beating heart of Christian teachings? And, and the reason you're doing it, that makes it even worse, the reason you're doing it is, is the reason you're toadying around these utterly vile people who are the worst of humanity is for personal gain, is to advance your career. And again, I don't think that, that that's a very Christian value. You see, I think Paul really, really, really wants a job on the production of season 13. I think he wants a significant one at that. Probably uh, something like head writer or in the writer's room or something along those lines. And honestly, I hope he gets it. I hope he gets it for a couple of reasons. Partially, I hope he gets it because, he, as I said, he is a fantastic Doctor Who writer. There's no question about that. Uh, and yeah, I think his influence might make uh, something that is not agonizingly dull, preachy and dour to watch, you know, with a with a central character that has some of the characteristics of the Doctor, other than being, you know, you know other than this you know, representation they made of her being this bumbling idiot who has no idea what she's doing and just causes death and destruction wherever she goes. I just want to point out, the Timeless Children, she did, in fact, cause the destruction of humanity. That's pretty bad. Now, I can actually see Chibnall wanting to draft Cornell in, as, you know, I imagine he would be hoping that Cornell's uh, markedly superior writing ability, which it, which undoubtedly he has, will help turn around the disastrous nosedive in the popularity of Doctor Who. Of course, Cornell's talent alone won't do it. Probably this entire brand has been tainted in the eyes of the normie, the, the normie public, the general the general viewing audience. I'm not talking about the fandom, I'm not talking about the, the normal audience. You know, in the same way that Doctor Who was a tainted brand in the 80s. Just like then, it, it, it won't matter if the quality of scripts suddenly improved. You know, I think the, the last couple of years of the classic era, the scripts, it was some, I think it was the best Doctor Who we had in over a decade, in, in, in my estimation. But just like then, it won't make any difference. Just like now, it won't make any difference. People have stopped watching. People have stopped watching because they just assume it's going to be awful. They assume it's going to be dour. They assume it's going to be boring. They assume it's going to be a preachy uh, experience. And I think the only real option for them to do to to resuscitate this brand is uh, is to regenerate her ASAP and rebrand the entire show. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, something we really should keep in mind is that we are providing priceless consumer research and feedback right now for the BBC. Companies like the BBC, uh, they actually pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for the research we're giving them for free. And the research, the research is telling them that this era of Doctor Who has been a disaster and continues to be a disaster. Any responsible company that has to answer to investors or, you know, or to anyone really, uh, would know that if, the, if this, prop this valuable property was not going to be utterly destroyed, they would need to rebrand it and rebrand it quickly before moving forward. So, you know, I can see them really wanting to uh, um, uh, to re regenerate Jodie. Maybe, I, I, yeah, I still think that she's going to regenerate at the end of the next episode, the one that is already filmed. Once I start seeing, like, pictures of filming, you know, whenever whenever that's going, I, I would believe that she's exactly doing the full season 13. But I think they're just going to say, oh, look, I said I was in season 13. And I am in season 13. One episode of it. Boom. And yeah, I really think that's, that, that's what the data is telling them they need to do. 
But whatever is going to happen, whatever is going to happen moving forward, Paul Cornell wants to be part of it. And he's playing a very dangerous game with his career to get there. The reality is this pandemic has changed everything. And more so for creators like him than anyone else. The infrastructure of the companies that, that he can sell his writing to are, are crumbling as we speak. We have no idea how widespread the ramifications are eventually going to be. Pension plans are going to be worthless. You know, that's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. Banks could well fall. Even Disney could fall. Yes, Disney. That behemoth Disney is currently losing $30 billion a day. $30 billion a day during the shutdown, which means, conservatively, they're looking at an $8 billion loss before they can resume getting back to uh, uh, any form of, like, normal business. You know, and $8 billion might just be enough to take Disney out. Now, all of this is probably going to come back. All the all the media is probably going to come back. But for the foreseeable future, there are going to be a lot less jobs for writers. You know, I think probably the job pool is going to shrink to about 30% of the size it is right now. So if writers want to write and they want to financially support themselves on the writing, they don't have these companies that they, 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 they can sell to anyone. They have to deal directly with us, the customer, the paying customers. And they need to develop they need to develop and cultivate an audience. So one thing that's very bad when you're trying to cultivate an audience is when you chain block half of your potential paying bloody customers. Look, I wasn't even in the block, which I, I'm kind of like uh, embarrassed about. Really, what's wrong with me? I wasn't even in the chain block. But, you know, I, I, I am not going to look at your work favor. I'm not going to give you a pun. I understand. I'm not going to say, I'm boycotting Paul Cornell's work because you might write something that I want to see or hear. You know, you might do a Doctor Who thing that I want. I'm like, okay, I'm not going <laughs> to deprive myself because you're an idiot. I mean, but let's say you're starting your own, your own thing and you're doing a, a radio play, a, a comic book. Uh, if you weren't such a jerk, I would give you a punt. I would want to help you out. Uh, but you are a jerk. So I'm totally not. Absolutely not. I mean, Again, if it comes out and it says it's the greatest thing ever, I might, you know, I might think about it. But yeah, I don't think you're, you're even gonna, uh, you're even gonna get that far. This, this idea of blocking paying customers is just not a privilege that you have anymore, Paul. It's not a privilege that even people with far more successful careers that you simper around on Twitter have anymore. So you know, so after, <laughs> after Cornell uh, exercised half of his potential customers. Ah, every time I say it, it makes my head explode. Then, then he went on to see what he was trying to do, and that was to desperately ingratiate himself to to uh, to Chris Chibnall. So we've seen this kind of campaign he's been running over the, over the last couple of weeks. You know, it started off with uh, uh, he he wrote a story for Joda's Doctor, which actually he suggested that Joda's Doctor. Act like a moron, so not to freak out people with her amazeballs awesomeness. I, I, I can feel that, like, slipping in there. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be, that's sinking in quite nicely to Ch Chibnall's vision. Uh, but then, uh, during the tweet along, uh, we got a prequel to Human Nature, which uh, married the Seventh Doctor Virgin novel ver version with the, with the Tenants version, uh, in, in like a multiverse th theory. Yeah, and that's why we got, uh, we got this, this next tweet. Let's see if we turn it on. Uh, doink. Okay. I think the idea that Doctor Who has canon was already lying in bits at the side of the road, but I hope tonight will help wash that concept, wash the concept gently into the gutter. Uh, okay then. I'm kind of wishful thinking. Uh, so I think, um, what Cornell was trying to do there is unpick the incredibly unpopular Timeless Children mess. And it was, I will remind you, the incredibly unpopular time, uh, Timeless Children mess that people not liking was the reason that, that uh, Cornell chose to chain block half of his potential customers. The freaking idiot. But then, <laughs> then we got a sequel to uh, uh, that the sequel to Human Nature that completely, completely nailed Jodie's Doctor by making her an utter idiot. And I don't think he realised he, he made her an utter idiot in this one. Uh, so again, it sounds like he's perfect casting to, to write for her. Uh, so it had Jodie's Doctor choosing to release Daughter of Mine from the mirror, which uh, uh, David Tennant's Doctor had trapped her in after a, a gazillion Doctors, uh, many of them from uh, Cornell's multi multiverse doctor theory, kept, uh, uh, kept coming to see if she had any way reformed <laughs> or if she was still, in fact, a vicious psychopathic killer. So Jody, Jody's doctor found her and found her to still be a vicious psychopathic killer. But instead of the other doctor saying, you know what, I'm not going to release this vicious psychopathic killer 
uh, into the into the universe to continue viciously, psychopathically killing people. I'm going to keep her in the mirror. Joe's doctor, in all her, in all her wisdom, said, I, I, "Yeah, I think I think I'm going to release her." And you know what I'm going to do to show you how merciful I am, how wonderful I am. Yeah, that wasn't mercy. That was idiocy. Joda's doctor narrowly avoids being murdered by daughter of mine, the vicious psychopathic killer, because she left in a hurry, leaving her in a highly populated area. So, to recap, uh, in in her mercy, Jodie's doctor deposited an unrepentant, unreformed psychopathic killer in a highly populated area where she will inevitably continue to be a psychopathic killer, psychopathically killing lots of people. So how will her victims' families view Joda's doctor's mercy? They're going to think she's a destructive, evil moron, because that is what she is. She, re <laughs> she released Daughter of Mine to virtue signal to herself. That is what a terrible virtue signaler she is. Then... As the uh, as the evening finished, uh, we, we had Cornell give himself over completely to be Chibnall's prison bitch with this tweet. Let's see, I can pull it up. There you go. Doink. There we go. Oh, my God. This, is, this one, this is really quite, kind of embarrassing for you, Paul. Uh, the last thing I want to say is the person who bought the first part of this trilogy, The Shadow Passes to You, was Chris Chibnall. Yeah, okay, Paul, you're working on the premise that we think the, the, these uh, these things you did were wonderful. They're like as wonderfully received as everything else. They're not. They're not. You know why? Because they're all wrapped around justifying the 13th Doctor. They're not as well received as, as uh, Farewell Sarah Jane Smith or the Strax intro. They're not. Or Rory. Because it's part of, the, uh, part of clearly a, uh, a, legitim a legitimacy campaign for the 13th Doctor. So, uh, the last thing I want to say is the person who bought this first part, or uh, first part of this uh, trilogy, The Shadow Passes, to you was uh, Chris Chibnall. Who? If, wait, how is this a trilogy? They're in, they're in no way linked thematically. Okay, whatever. To uh, to you was Chris Chibnall, who was responsible for all the official Doctor Who content designed to help people around the world in the mock in the lockdown. Round of applause for him too. Yeah, I think more that um, the stuff we've been getting from the uh, production office is a legitimacy campaign, because that's how illegitimate this Doctor is. The official production team has to do, go on a legitimacy campaign to legitimize their Doctor. And look, Paul, dude, have some, some semblance of self-respect, but I, I guess not. So, you know, your plan may actually work, and uh, Cornell simpering and toging might well get him the job that he wants. But best case scenario, Paul, best case scenario, what do you think is going to happen? If you are a sincere Christian, which I really think you want to be, then we share a similar worldview that at the end of this life, everything is accounted for. Every cruelty and every kindness is remembered and judged. You chain block people, essentially calling them if and foes, which is like the worst thing that you can, the worst insult you can hurl at somebody in the Western world right now, judging them not for the good, but for the evil. And, you know, I know you might say to yourself, well, as long as I've accepted Jesus into my heart, I can be, I can enter the kingdom of heaven when I'm judged and when I, when, when I die. But I'm going to put it to you, uh, Mr. Cornell, that a man who has acted so incredibly badly to so many people for such little reason has never truly accepted Jesus into his heart. So this is one man of faith talking to another with a harsh reality to drop on you. You may well indeed profit from being a terrible person that you've been in this world, but I can almost guarantee you, you certainly won't in the next. My name is Fila Beckin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.